From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Newsweek magazine had quite an article that we will be dealing with today. We are all socialists now. And Newt Gingrich's new book, To Save America. Also, The Future of Capitalism. We will deal with this and so much more. Before we get into our program today, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for America. I cannot express what a joy it is for me to live here and for us to be, have the opportunity to give the gospel here in the United States without any oppression. We can give the gospel now, Jack, around the world. And we do, Rex, to 247 nations, every country on earth, every week. But Rexella, trouble is coming with this movement towards socialism. And the movement of atheists who want to do away with the day of prayer and all the rest. And th the hate language thing that the UN is proposing so that you'll not be able to say that Jesus is the only way. And that is the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. America's in trouble, as you'll hear today. Oh, yes, Jack. And with that in mind, we need to pray for our wonderful country that we will maintain our freedom. Well, I want to refer to the 40th president. Do you remember who that was? He was the one who brought down the Berlin Wall and communism in Eastern Europe. He was a great humanitarian. He loved God with all of his heart. And he was a wonderful Christian man. And that was President Ronald Reagan. In fact, he wrote a beautiful letter to Jack Van Impey before he passed on to be with the Lord. And while he was president, as a matter of fact, he wrote to Jack and said, thank you for all you have taught me about things to come, eschatology. Yeah. And uh, it was a great letter. You really enjoyed it, I loved it, your Jack. books and videos. And because of it, I believe Armageddon is coming and America must prepare. Yes, absolutely. Well, he was very much for democracy and very much against, I said he brought down the Berlin Wall, remember? Very much against socialism and communism. Take a look at to whom I am referring and here you are. Miss this guy yet? Look at what he had to say about socialism. Socialism only works in two places. Heaven, where they don't need it, and hell, where they already have it, <laughs> Ronald Reagan. Amen. We'll go on to something else here that he had to say. The most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Whoa. The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. And here's something else this gentleman is wearing. It's a duty of the patriot to protect his country from its government. Going on, revolutionaries on the way. U.S. Social Forum expected to draw up to 20,000 people, and that rally here was supposed to be about 20,000 people in the city of Detroit. They are trying to put 14 per room because they are the socialists of the hour and the government has to give them everything, and they've got 300 tents they're setting up. And it says they all arrive with a $5 bill, a pair of underwear, Whoa. and never change either one Whoa. of them. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, all right. One thing that I do want to say that my heart is very, very burdened for my country, and I want to ask Jack, are we going in the wrong direction? What do you think, friends? Jack, what do you think? Are we going in the wrong direction? We really are. And before this program is finished, you will be shocked with some of the information you hear. First of all, Psalm 33, 12 says, 
Uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Remember the first commandment in Exodus 20, verse 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. America was established as a Christian nation. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, great men of God. And we don't believe that we have any other gods except Yahweh, the Father, Yeshua, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Greek for the Comforter, which is the Paraclete. And I'm going to tell you that all three of these form one God. That's what the Bible teaches. First John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, Christ, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. They work in unison. We have a formula called H2O. When you get it out of the faucet, it's water. When you boil it, it's steam. And when you freeze it, it's ice. Three in one. And we are to teach all nations in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Matthew 28, 19. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And that's 2 Corinthians 13, 14, 3 in 1. Now Jesus, the second member of the Trinity, is my God. That's what this book teaches over and over. Matthew 1, 23, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. Oh, do I like Acts 16, 30, the Philippian jailer said to Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now watch verse 34. They believe in God, Christ, with all of their house. Romans 9, 5, Christ came who is over all God, blessed forever. 1 Timothy 3, 16, great is the mystery of Godless, that God was manifest in the flesh. 1 John 5, 20, we have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Now, he is the only Savior. But you know what? They're trying to get rid of the Lord Jesus right now. This hate speech that's coming up. You'll not be able to say Jesus is the only way, even though Jesus himself said in John 8, 24, you die in your sins if you believe not that I am he. It's Jesus said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me if any man enter and be saved. And God showed me something powerful just two weeks ago in verse 1. He said, the door is the way and anyone who climbs up any other way but the door, me, is a thief and a robber. You can't be saved without the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, we have a friend who runs one of the uh, Kirby stores and it's Spito Gaftagas. And he said to me just yesterday, Eric Sully, he says, what's happening in America? You can't mention God in the schools. You can't read Bibles or pray. Why? Because... They can't take the word of God. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, Genesis 1.1. We didn't evolve from monkeys. That's a lot of monkey business. And I'll tell you, these atheists want to get rid of it all. The Bible and prayer. Now, a court in Wisconsin is going to file a lawsuit for the atheists of America so that we'll get rid of God. We'll get rid of the day of prayer. God forgive us. You know what I think about these atheists? Exactly what this book says in Psalm 14, 1, Psalm 53, 1. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. And then Spiro went on to say to me, imagine, you can no longer say Merry Christmas. It's Happy Holidays. Listen, you guys who make millions off of the Lord Jesus' birthday every year, you are a bunch of hypocrites. It's his birthday. It's his day. And we ought to be able to say Merry Christmas. But you see, the first part of Christmas is C-H-R-I-S-T, Christ. Well, I got news for you. You know why Christ came? John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And God the Father sent his son to be the savior of the world. 1 John 4, 14, no ifs, ands, or buts. Jesus is the way. Persecute me if you want, but I'll preach it till I get my last breath. Oh, yes. Well, you know, we, as I say, I need to be praying for our country. And a question again, Jack, that I would like to ask you, can we turn it around? We're going in one direction. Can we go in the other direction? I think history's in the making. And the Bible says that this one is going to come as a great king, powerful and fierce in Daniel 8.23 to devour the whole world, Daniel 7.23. It's in the making right now. I think the only hope for Excel is the coming of Jesus because we're going to be saved out of this mess when socialism takes over. And you're going to see soon that it will take over in 
America that was based on Christian principles. You know, the only hope for us is the Lord calling us out of this mess. I'll keep you out of the hour of testing that comes on the whole world, Revelation 3.10, and that's when this new world order, perhaps under our president, comes into provision very, very soon. Ha, we're going to hear, come up hither, Revelation 4.1, and we're going to sweep through a hundred 87 trillion billions of miles in 11 one hundredths of a second. The twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, and get us out of this socialistic mess. Whoa, Jack, you're and really you know excited what, about it. Yes. Dr. Harry Ironside of the Moody Memorial Church 80 years ago said, there's going to be a world government, the revived Roman Empire, and I predict that all of it will become socialistic. We're on the way. Whoa. Another great president. I know you will remember him. It stood up to communism was President Kennedy. And of course, take a look at the one who resisted him in Russia, Khrushchev, on the cover of Time magazine. Let's go on here. Obama's inspiration saw Alinsky. Now, I'm going to ask Jack a moment, well, just how did he affect our president, the first radical known to man? This is what Saul Alinsky had to say, who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom, was Lucifer. My word, he is talking about when Satan rebelled against God in heaven and God tossed him out and he came to earth. God allowed him to come to this planet. Well, Jack... Uh, how have these two men affected the president with their thoughts? 1959, Khrushchev said, we cannot bring America into communism. We must feed the people small doses of socialism, which becomes Marxism, which becomes communism. Look that up in Webster's Dictionary. And then Salalinsky, he's the one who was the mentor to our president. In his rules of radicals, he says, we need change, change, change. And the change is a socialist, communist revolt, revolution. And you know what? He says the only one who was successful in doing it is Lucifer. And God had to cast him out of heaven, and he now had his own empire. And he's right on that. The Bible says that Satan was cast out because of his pride in Ezekiel, but look at Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation, God's throne in the sides of the earth. I will be like the most high God. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now listen carefully, that's Luke 10, 18. Why? because this one has taken over. There are three heavens, Second Corinthians 12, 2. Christ and God the Father live in the third heaven, but heavens one and two are controlled by this demonic being, Satan. And he has a group of fallen angels that were turned out with him in Revelation 12, 4. And right now he controls this whole world system. He's the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. He's the prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2.2. 2. And that's why we Christians have such a struggle. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy 6.12, we are to fight the good fight of faith. And why? Because we are struggling wrestling with these demonic spirits in high places. Ephesians 6, 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, other human beings, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against demonic spirit wickedness in high places. Lucifer has taken over, but he's also taken over Saul Alinsky's socialist communist plan for the United States of America. And you know, we are in trouble. And I like what Leonard Ravenhill, the great preacher said, we Christians are hunting for mice when the lions are ready to devour us. And that's 1 Peter 5, 8. The devil is a roaring lion who walks about seeking whom he may devour, chew up, destroy. Mm. I can't believe it. Saul Alinsky respected Lucifer, respected the devil for rebelling in heaven and uh, being tossed out of heaven and was against the living God. Well, we're going to go on here about socialism and where we're headed. This is from the Detroit News. Has increase in government power crossed over to socialism? Here once again, the National Review, our socialist 
future. Whoa. And Newsweek, here I quoted this before, we are all socialists. Now, USA Today, uh, Michael Steele calls the health care overhaul plan socialism. Obama officials Dems support global socialism. And once again, Speaker Pelosi, I did not know this. Controversial Marxist connections. And once again, here's a very interesting McAvaney Intelligence Advisor. I'm not going to take time to read any of this to you, but 2010, a new fascist socialist democracy? Good question. Going on here, Thomas Sowell. Is U.S. now on slippery slope to tyranny? Well, you know, Newt Gingrich has some very, very good things to say, and Frank Beckman wrote about this. Obama is no longer a centrist, and he is referring to what uh, Newt Gingrich had to say in his new book. Jack, perhaps you'd like oh, to read this Oh, this is for us. powerful, and I'm going to go slowly. Don't miss one word. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich needs only four pages of his new book to save America to make his most explosive allegations against President Obama's policies, which he characterizes as a creation of a secular socialist machine. The secular socialist machine, writes Gingrich, represents as great a threat to America as Nazi Germany or the Soviet Union once did. The Obama administration, continued Gingrich, is a direct threat to our liberty and a direct threat to the country we have historically been. They are specifically anti-religious, leaving us with only one conclusion. King Barack I will stop at nothing to continue the operation of the secular socialist machine about which Newt Gingrich has now warned. And let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a Christian, this is not politics. Stand for your God. My Bible says that we are to depart from this kind of thinking. Uh, well, this country was built on the Lord Jesus Christ and Christianity. I'm going to bring in a slew of presidents very soon to prove it. But hear me, Romans 16, 17 says, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ which you received, and avoid them. Oh, Jack, we know Alan Weber posted a picture of four words that was very unsettling to me, and I'd like for you to take a look at what Alan Weber posted, the future of capitalism. And friends, you might recognize this gentleman. Here is Dr. Adrian Rogers. What a great pastor and American he was. And he had a, a great statement about socialism. I'd like you to read it with me. You cannot legislate the poor into freedom by legislating the wealthy out of freedom. What one person receives without working for, another person must work for without receiving. The government cannot give to anybody anything if the government does not first take from someone else. When half of the people get the idea that they do not have to work because the other half is going to take care of them, and when the other half gets the idea that it does no good to work because somebody else is going to get what they work for, that, my dear friend, is about the end of any nation. You cannot multiply wealth by dividing it. Oh, Dr. Adrian Rogers, thank you for that very wise statement about socialism. And you agree with this, don't you, oh, Jack? Oh, this man was the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. And what a hero of the faith and how he loved Christ. I never forget the night we preached for him. What a night we had. Yes, Jack. With everything that Jack has had to say now about where our country is going and the coming of the Lord, I want to emphasize once again, we need to be ready for this. You know, God was the creator of democracy. Do you know why I say that? Because you have a free will. You can choose Jesus or you can refuse Jesus. And Jack, you'll give us that opportunity right now to choose or refuse. I think you know through this program that Jesus is the only way. So forget anything else you've ever attempted to get into heaven. Pray it. Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, the only way to be saved. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for your suffering, your agony, your compassion, your love as you shed your blood for me to forgive me, to cleanse me from every sin. Lord Jesus, I receive your sacrifice this day. I ask you to 
come into my heart and be my Savior. In your holy name, Jesus, I pray this. Amen. Amen. I trust that you chose Jesus to be your Savior, that you prayed that prayer with Jack, and I guarantee you will never regret it. How wonderful to know that when we open our hearts to the Lord, we can begin anew. All the past is forgiven, washed away. Anything that you don't want there is gone, whether it's drugs or alcohol or whatever. Wonderful to know that you can begin anew. And you know what? There's my address. If you write to me, I'll send you absolutely free this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. Let me know, and I'll send you this little booklet. Absolutely free. Well, you know, we have a wonderful offer for you. Bob, would you please tell them how they can receive it? To order your copy of the book, God's Good Plan, with the bonus DVD, Terrorism Accelerating, But Peace Coming, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. Please order God's Good Plan because we are also going to be enclosing in an extended DVD that you will want because we are giving more information. You know, I, I was going to give you a different thought to close this program, but the Lord has really changed my mind. You know, the best reason for doing right today is tomorrow. Jack has certainly pointed out what's happening in the world today. We need to make the right decision for the Lord. The best reason for doing right today is tomorrow. We will certainly look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, keep this in your mind as you read the headlines, as you read the news, and go to your Bible. God cares for you so very much, and so do we. That's why we come into your home and give this wonderful invitation to you week after week. Don't put it off. Don't be left behind. The Lord died for you, so please open your heart to Him. The best reason for doing right today is tomorrow. Look forward to being in your home again next week, the Lord willing, and until then, remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very much. Bye-bye.